And in the hospital, Jinwa thinks about the elixir that could cure any disease and that maybe you can cure his mother's eternal sleep disease, but he admits that if he went into that castle now to get the ingredients, he would surely lose his life, so he needed to go up a few levels to become stronger. And that's why he ends up accepting Jinho's offer to enter 19 C-rank dungeons, but on the condition that only the two of them enter and for that it would be necessary to hire hunters to meet the quota, just like Dongsuk did, since it would take a minimum of 8 hunters to enter a C-rank Dangyeon, Jinho thinks it would be too risky and Jinwoo says that if they do it that way. They would close the 19 raids without any victims, which would surely leave his father impressed, making Jinho agree to his proposal. But you're already subscribing to the channel to receive the next episode, in addition to helping this beginner, so take advantage and leave your like, in addition to commenting a lot to give that morale and let's go to the anime. And meanwhile, the Hunter CHA was approached by a representative of the Yujin Construction Company. But let's go to Jinho and his father who said about the portals that started to appear about 10 years ago and made the world change rapidly both in infrastructure as economy. Media and politics thanks to dungeons and nowadays the infrastructure depended so much on the resources of the dungeons that they could no longer operate without them and the only ones able to get these resources would be the hunters who were supervised by the Association of Hunters, a public institution that took awakened. Hunters to rank their ranks and supervise them, as they ran the portals that went up for auction, as well as dealing with dungeon breaks, but in the VDD the association was nothing more than a state service. And the vast majority of the resources of the dungeons were collected by the guilds that hired hunters and thanks to the resources collected they became extremely profitable and among them they had the five largest guilds in the country the guild of hunters, white tiger, reapers. Fame and the knights who had a monopoly on the profits of the dungeons and he saw no reason to stand still and allow it to continue like this because they could not let resources so as he contributed so much to this country, it was his responsibility to take care of it, so the formation of this guild would be essential to achieve this. Jinho agrees with his father and thinks he still wants to recruit an S-rank hunter to work with his brother would be very risky, but it was not his case. And we go back to Jinwoo who finishes his daily quest, and this time the number doesn't exceed the requirement and makes him think that maybe that cursed mystery box is out of reach, at least for now, although he hoped that he would have an item as valuable as the key to the demon castle, but maybe the box he received from random loot could give him another key to a stagnant dungeon, but he was wrong and you get a bingo card. He walks back and thinks that three attribute points were not enough to change his current status that was high so he needed to do something to level up more effectively while waiting for Jinho to the C rank dungies he even remembers the penalty zone and wonders if he could fight that centipede but gives up on the idea because he didn't know if he could defeat it although he imagined it would be easier but his phone ends up ringing and he receives an invitation to a D rank raid from the hunter association and decides to accept it since it was better than nothing despite being frustrating. And meanwhile we see Mr. Song who was talking to a student but his cell phone also rings inviting him to the D rank raid and his student asks him if he didn't intend to retire, making him remember the last raid and says that maybe he is right but he would like to take advantage of the time he has left to contribute to society since he only lost an arm and managed to get out alive. And elsewhere Kim told his wife that he was summoned to a new raid she is worried because last time he almost lost his life and Kim says that he needed to do this for the future of their children and besides the association did not send low rank hunters to dangerous dungeons and that time was an exception. And meanwhile we see BAK furious with CHOI for having arrested him in that interview but he says that he had done very well and BAK is still indignant because he didn't come there for him to pull his bag and bet that that interview was supposed to be with him but anyway he wanted to know what CHOI wanted since he was sure that he hadn't called him just to get a scolding and CHOI hands him a folder where it said that the construction company Yujin intended to start their own guild and BAK says that they were pulling some strings to keep it a secret but there were remorse within his guild who were trying to recruit some members but he was sure that CHOI already knew that he knew this so he should stop clowning around and get straight to the point. But elsewhere Juhi's mother criticized her because since she was little she was always fearful and asked if she wasn't getting in the way of the other hunters because even though she was B-ranked she was still weak so she should go home to help in the shop but Juhi gets angry and tells her to stop meddling in her life she hangs up the call and wonders if she was really getting in the way of others but if remembers Jinwa training so decides to try again and receives a message from the association inviting her to the next dungeon. 
But we go back to the guild where CHA crosses paths with BAK leaving CHOI's room. She enters the president's office and he asks how he could help her. So she says that she ended up being approached by a scout from the Eugen Construction Company, who made a proposal for her to become their guild master, but she refused. CHOI thanks him and she says that he met President BK on the way and asks about what they had talked. And in a bar, BK was thinking about what CHOI had said about the island of Jeju that had been isolated since that failure that people were trying to forget, in addition to the terror that the island represented, but he admits that no matter how common portals had become and how much people fawned over him as the ultimate weapon of humanity. He would never be able to forget what happened there and intended to finish that island in a but for that he needed him and the others to also be willing. To get strength and gather allies to influence society and that's why he scheduled that interview and was training new hunters and he was sure that BAK also had his reason since he must have left something on that island making him remember some companions and in a dubious place a man begged another to take his life from someone. But we go back to Jinwoo who was going to the portal and later on we see Song who thought it was ironic that he had gained magical powers even though he had trained in martial arts all his life, which was useless against magical monsters, but he ends up meeting Jinwoo, and is surprised by his new appearance and is happy to fleece with his leg since he believed that a high rank healer may have helped him but in any case it was great to see him heal Jinwoo is grateful and looks at the man's arm who says that it had been a long time since his injury so they couldn't help him but he didn't care about that he walked back and Jinwoo asks what he was doing there and Song says that he had been called by the association, leaving the boy surprised that he had also been summoned. And the two arrive at the portal location and come across the other survivors of that day, which Song finds quite unusual. Everyone is surprised and Kim and Kang embarrassed, while Song thought it was expected since that day they all left Sung Jinwoo behind so they could escape and couldn't blame Kim for being embarrassed to look at them after what he had done. And meanwhile Juhi was all silly with this man who had changed so much in a short time and even seemed taller so he really was fine when she saw him surprising the boy. But a car from the hunters association arrives and three inmates get out of it, one of the men teases Juhi because he wanted to play with her, but another man tells him to shut up since they didn't go out for a walk. And a woman explains that those prisoners would be substitute hunters who would fight alongside them, Song is indignant and the woman says that they were there to reduce their sentences and should not cause problems, she asks for the group's understanding and explains that they were short of members because of the exodus of the local hunters and with them would also go Kong Taishik. The supervisor of the hunters association who was rank B so if the worst happened he would easily deal with the C rank criminals, Jinwa warns Juhi that she might be better off staying out of the raid, but the girl was determined to go along with him. And the criminals are released and Kang goes to Jinwoo and Song and says that the inmates were under his responsibility so they could rest easy and ask who would be the leader of the raid and Song asks if Jinwoo would mind if he was the leader again Jinwoo agrees and he thanks him for trusting him again and says that on that day seven people lost their lives because of him and he had no words to describe how much he failed to protect them. But thanks to Jinwoo, six people managed to survive. And I was grateful to him from my heart. But Jinwoo asks him to stand up and Song asks the other members if they would mind if he was the leader and no one goes against the idea while Kang watched Jinwoo but now they were ready and could enter the dungeon. Bringing the end of the 8th episode, thank you very much to those who stayed this far and don't forget that mega morale with your like, subscribe and share, VLW and see you next time.